name is Anna Cook and I'm a professional learning specialist with Keep Indiana Learning. We want to thank all of you for visiting us and listening on World Read Aloud Day. This was presented to you by Lit World and Scholastic. Please check out the additional information for World Read Aloud Day as well as some free resources at www.scholastic.com forward slash World Read Aloud Day. Thank you again. Hello and welcome to the Keep Indiana Learning live stream for World Read Aloud Day. I am April Long. I am our English teacher at Indiana Online Academy, which is part of CIESC. And I teach middle school and high school. And before I get started with our book today, I want to share a little bit with you about why reading is so important to me. I've been an English teacher for 16 years, um, and what I have always loved and what I love to share with my students is the way that books can just transport us to another place, another time where we get a portal into a life that might be very different from ours, and that can always teach us so much and we can learn from characters in that way. Today, I will be reading from Salsa Stories. This is by Lulu Delacray. Let me get the cover up here for you. And I do have a little bit of Spanish language background. Um, this Lulu is a bilingual author. I am going to do my best to give my best Spanish pronunciations. If I mess something up, please forgive me. Um, and afterwards, please do check the notes for a read aloud activity to go with this. I am going to read one or two stories for you. Um, the way this is set up is we sort of get different stories from the family about different, um, different things that they're doing, but they're all sort of individual little stories that go together. And the first one is called New Year's Day. New Year's Day. Esteban, turn down the stereo, Mama calls Papa from the kitchen. She swirls the chicken in its marinade with one hand, then answers the telephone with the other. Our house stirs with laughter and chatter as guests arrive one by one. The cousins run noisily about our basement to the beat of salsa music that blares from speakers on two floors. In the dining room, Abuelito, Abuelo Jaime, Uncle Robert, and Papa click dominoes together, concentrating on each move of their game. They play with Abuelito's lucky dominoes, the only ones he brought with him from Cuba 40 years ago. In the kitchen, my grandma Abita, our housekeeper Floor, and I rhythmically chop and slice. The rich, pungent scent of garlic crackling and olive oil rises from the stove. We are helping Mama prepare the sofrito sauce for her arroz con pollo. This is the rice dish for which Mama is famous among all our family and friends. Flor and Abita chatter away in Spanish as they struggle to hold back tears from the chopped onion. Flor tells Abita about the trip she will soon make to Guatemala for Holy Week. I've been saving for over a year to visit my family, she says. Flor has saved not only for her ticket, but also for the gifts she will bring to everyone from America. New jeans, walkie talkies, a small TV, and the latest toys. Abita nods her approval. Above the din of music, children's shouts, and clattering pots and pans, we miraculously hear the doorbell. Carmen Teresa, get the door, my little sister Laura calls from the basement stairs. You get it, please, I shout back, I'm busy. I'm afraid that if I abandon my spot in the kitchen, I will lose it to someone else who is anxious to help. I love to cook. And when company comes, a good spot in Mama's kitchen is hard to come by. I watch Laura dash to open the door. Doña Josefa, she calls out, then flies into the woman's open arms. Feliz Año Nuevo, Lorita. Doña Josefa says, as she gives Laura a warm hug and a present. 
Doña Josefa is from Peru. She is one of the doctors from the free clinic where Mama volunteers. Mama always says Doña Josefa loves to dote on us since she has no children of her own. Laura thanks her for the gift, then steals into the dining room to open it. Doña Josefa finds me in the kitchen. She's holding a package wrapped in brown paper. Her leathery hands are a shade darker than the wrapping. She's about to place the package into my open hands, but stops herself when she notices they are covered in cilantro. She takes the package back to the entrance and puts it on a small table instead. For after you clean your hands, Carmen Teresa, she says. The last to arrive are Tia Marilia and Tio Rodolfo. They've brought bottles of Cojito and the latest hits from Ruben Blades and Willie Colon. Would you believe this, Tia Marilia jokes, glancing at the guests. All the men are enjoying themselves while the women slave in the kitchen. There are some old customs that not even life in the States can change. Tia Marilia is my favorite aunt. She has such a quick wit and when she's around, there is laughter everywhere. Suddenly my sister tugs at my sleeve. Look, Carmen, look what I got. Laura shows me a beautiful cloth doll that Doña Josefa gave her. Let me see yours, what did you get? Curious to find out, I wash my hands and look for my gift, but it's not on the table where Doña Josefa left it. And no one is near the table except our little cousin, Alex. When Laura sees him, she eagerly takes his hand and tries to play with him. But Alex has just learned to walk and he prefers to gleefully charge around the house. Laura calls Abuelita, the cinnamon. Laura quickly forgets about Alex and my gift and runs to do her only and favorite job in the kitchen. She must sprinkle cinnamon over the cool natilla. Abuelita prepared the velvety cream for dessert and filled 25 small bowls with it. This dessert is Laura's favorite. And after carefully studying each bowl, she mischievously covers the fullest one with a blanket of the spice. That's her way of claiming it. Mama calls everyone to eat. We've set the platters on the kitchen counter and people stream in to serve themselves. Then they sit wherever they please, at the dining room table, at the kitchen table, or in the living room. Abuelita stands up to say grace. He can sometimes go on for quite a long time for he loves to be at the center of attention. And he always ends prayer with the same old Spanish saying, salud, dinero, amor y tiempo para disfrutarlos. Health, money, love, and time to enjoy it all, he says. Everyone is very hungry by the time he finally gets to this part. I take a huge mouthful of steaming yucca when Doña Josefa sits next to me. Did you like your gift? She asks. I quickly swallow and excuse myself to avoid the, avoid the embarrassing situation of having to tell her I've misplaced it. I look again on the entrance table and under it, but the package is gone. In whispers, I ask my parents and some relatives if they have seen it, but no one has. To avoid Doña Josefa, I duck into the kitchen where I find Tia Marilia and Tio Rodolfo. They've been lured to the center of the kitchen floor by the dance music that's become irresistible to them. Gracefully, they twirl into each other's arms and show off their fiery moves. Inspired by her sister-in-law, Mama pulls me to the dance floor to teach me some basic salsa steps. Reluctantly, I follow. Don't look at your feet, warns Mama. Just feel the rhythm of the music. Across the room, I spot Laura next to Alex. I abandon the dance lesson to find out if she has seen my missing gift. Before I can ask, Alex topples the little rooster that was perched on the hand-carved nativity scene. And while Laura carefully rearranges the pieces, Alex has moved on to playing with something else. I peer over his shoulder to find he's trying to unwrap a brown package. It's my gift. Oh, Alex, I say, let me help you with that. I let him unwrap the small parcel, then give him the wrapping paper to play with. 
He seems quite happy to noisily rustle and crinkle the paper. My gift from Doña Josefa is a book filled with blank pages and covered with red fabric sprinkled with daisies. Inside, I find an inscription. Dear Carmen Teresa, when I was your age, I kept a journal in a book just like this one. I hope you'll find a treasured use for yours as I did mine. Doña Josefa. Show me, demands Laura. A smug look comes over her face when she sees the book. She is pleased that it is not something she likes better than her doll. Relieved to have found the gift, I run to Doña Josefa to thank her. What should I write in this book? I ask her. Doña Josefa's creased face lights up with a smile. There are many things you can write, she says. Perhaps you will want to keep a journal like I did. Or, offers Abuelita, you could write about things that have happened to you when you were younger. Or maybe you could collect stories from our family and friends, suggests Mama, since everyone is here today. Stories? Ah, cuentos, calls Abuelito from his seat at the dining room table where he has been eavesdropping. I have a great story for your book, Carmen Teresa. But first, he says in his deep voice, Abuelita, bring me more of that wonderful arroz con pollo, please. Abuelita nods to Floor, who quickly refills his plate. Abuelito grows, glows as everyone gathers around him to hear his tale. When you are finished, senor, Flor adds, I have a story for Carmen Teresa too. Ah, no, no, damas primero, says Abuelito, ladies first. Always a gentleman, replies Doña Josefa. And who knows, maybe we'll all take a turn. Why don't you start, Floor? As soon as we are comfortably settled around the dining room table, Floor begins her story. And so the rest that follow are all of the family stories um, that they tell to Carmen Teresa to put in her notebook. So thank you so much on behalf of Keep Indiana Learning. We thank you for joining us today for World Read Aloud Day. I really hope that you loved Salsa Stories, um, that you will be inspired to read the rest of them or maybe read them out loud. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and catch our upcoming live stream events. We look forward to seeing you at another Keep Indiana Learning event. Bye.